Welcome to our latest Wondering Walks of Wonder adventure. Today we're headed to Alpena, Michigan and a tour of this historic city. The history of Alpena is a long and rich one. The area was first inhabited by the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi people who lived there for centuries before the arrival of the Europeans in the early 1800s. Actually, the first European settler in the area was W.F. Collins, a fisherman who arrived in 1835. As we go along our tour, we'll learn a little bit more about the historic buildings in town and take a look at what Alpena has to offer. This first building that we see across the street from us is the Federal Building, but it's more commonly known as the Post Office Building. It is a great example of a Renaissance Revival architectural style building that was completed in 1912. The building housed Alpena's post office from 1913 until the 1950s. Across from the street from that is a structure known as the Armory and was originally built and named Memorial Hall. It was constructed in 1922, about the same time as the Federal Building. This building is constructed entirely from local cement donated by the Huron Portland Cement Company that was founded in Alpena in 1907. At one time, that cement company was the world's largest cement plant. This impressive cannon on the lawn of City Hall comes from the battleship the USS Maine, which exploded in Havana Harbor on February the 5th, 1898. The United States blamed Spain for this act of sabotage, and it is still much in debate whether it was an act of sabotage or a natural disaster and an explosion in the coal bunkers on the ship. But eventually this led to the outbreak of the Spanish-American War. City Hall that we're looking at right now was constructed between 1904 and 1909. Local contractors argued that it should be built of local brick or local limestone. Since each of these contractors were on the City Council, the City Council wisely decided after a long debate that they should not show favoritism and decided to use Bedford limestone from Indiana. If you take a look at the cupola along the top of the building, this is actually used for enemy plane spotting during World War II. Here's a little bit more about the history of Alp Alpena, Michigan. In 1856, George W. Fletcher and three others from Detroit plotted, platted a village by the name of Fremont after explorer John C. Fremont. The community was briefly renamed Thunder Bay in 1857 before being renamed again to Alpena in 1871. The city of Alpena was officially incorporated on March the 29th, 1871. During the latter parts of the 1800s and early 1900s, Alpena quickly grew as a logging and shipping center. In fact, it was one of the largest cities in Michigan. The city's economy also benefited from the discovery of limestone and cement in the area, and Alpena became a major producer of these materials. Now in 1871, most of the city was destroyed by a fire, but it was rebuilt and continued to grow. Alpena played an important role in World War II as it was a major shipbuilding center, and it also served as a staging area for troops and supplies headed to Europe.
The triangular shape building that we see in front of us is an Alpena historic landmark. This building was constructed in 1876 and is known as the Centennial Building. That's because it was built during the era of the Centennial of the United States, and that date is described in bricks along the top to commemorate the date. The building was constructed by Samuel Hitchcock, Hitchcock, who was also known as Deacon Hitchcock. It was built as a commercial building in an Odd Fellows meeting hall. This impressive church building is the Gable Ruth Gothic Revival Church called Trinity Episcopal Church. This building was constructed in 1883 of rusticated local limestone. It features a square corner tower with a steeple and arched glass windows that came from Exeter, England. The church entryway is virtually intact from when it was constructed 140 some odd years ago. Original oak pews, the pulpit furniture, and wainscoting remain inside the building. The pipe organ is especially impressive being a Skinner organ, which was one of the most notable builder of pipe organs in the country during its time. This building that we're taking a look at now is named the Beebe Block for Mr. Beebe who completed the building in 1891. It's one of the unusual shaped buildings that we see here along Washington Avenue and is in somewhat of a triangular shape. When the building first opened, the top two floors were used as a YMCA that contained various rooms, gymnastic equipment, books, papers, and magazines available for young men at the time. The first floor housed several businesses, and in later years, the Elks Club was located here.
First Congregational Church building is one of the newer buildings that we see on our tour today. It was built in 1955 and it replaces an earlier church that was constructed in 1868 and remodeled in 1892. This particular building was influenced by Gothic style architecture and is built of Besser concrete blocks. The church was a gift from Jesse Besser, a pioneer development of concrete block technology and a founder of the company that bears his name. We're now headed into the downtown area here in Alpena. One of the first buildings we see is what's called the Bertrand Block, which contains an ice cream parlor today. This building was home to many businesses over the years since its construction, most of them being drugstore. At one time, the Alpena Business College was located on the upper floors. If you go inside this building, it has some of the most beautiful tin built uh, ceilings that can be found in the downtown area. As we look across the street, we see the State Theater. But this building was 
opened in 1879 and it opened as the Maltz Opera House and housed retail businesses on the first floor and the Opera House on the second floor. It was a large theater typical of its time with elaborate de decorations including five chandeliers and individual seats for 700 people. The stage sets and dressing rooms were equally impressive. At the beginning of the motion picture area, the room was remodeled to show silent movies. Unfortunately, a fire destroyed the structure in 1925, but it was rebuilt in the Art Deco style and opened as the Maltz Theater in December of 1925. The new Maltz Theater sign had 800 lights and cost over $1,000. Later modifications remodeled the projection room to present talking pictures for the first time in 1929. We're now headed towards the historic 2nd Avenue Bridge. In fact, we're in for a special treat because this is a drawbridge that was built in 1939. And we're actually going to see the drawbridge work as a small boat, tour boat, I believe it is. Yep, the tour boat right there heads underneath the bridge. During the 1930s, the old swing bridge that crossed the Thunder Bay River became inadequate and was occasionally inoperative. It was replaced by this bridge, which we're standing on right now, in 1939. This bridge was voted the most beautiful bridge of that year by an architectural society. Looking at the bridge today, you can see its clean lines and its Art Deco styling, which won it this award. After crossing the bridge and seeing it rise, the drawbridge rise, which was pretty cool, the next building we see is Alpina Furniture, but this building is commonly known as the Cohen Building. 
There were a variety of businesses at this location, including furniture and hardware stores. A fire in the early 19 de 1920s destroyed the original building, so what we see here is a somewhat newer but still interesting building that was constructed shortly thereafter the fire. In the 1930s, there was a bowling alley and a nightclub inside this building. The nightclub was called the Trianon, which was located on the second floor of the building. Just to our right is a block which now houses the Thunder Bay Theater. It was constructed in 1904 by E.C. Spins and was known as the New Spins Block. It contained one of the largest drugstores in the city. Among other products it offered was the largest stock of wallpaper in Alpena, and it also had a combination of merchandise that seems odd to us today. The store even cut up wallpaper samples and had them printed to use as receipts. The Cohen family purchased the block in 1934 and ran a candy and cigar wholesale business here. Thunder Bay Theater acquired the building from the Cohen family and staged their first production in 1983. I hope you've enjoyed this Wondering Walks of Wonder tour through Alpena, Michigan. If you did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you on our next Wondering Walks of Wonder. Take care now. Bye.